and with Tokugawa rule ending civil wars, local lords could look to other matters, like their personal style. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down fascinating or lesser known facts about the culture, habits, and history of Japan's renowned warriors, the samurai. He called in the Beth Smiths of Japan and had them restudy all sword making methods of the past. Number 20, female samurai. Known as Onna Bugesha, women played significant roles in Japan's feudal history, sometimes standing shoulder to shoulder with their male counterparts on the battlefield. It was not only the men who swore to uphold this ideal. Samurai women were also trained to protect their family. These warriors were trained in the use of weapons, particularly the naginata, a spear-like weapon that was effective for slicing through infantry. Onna Bugesha were integral to the defense of homes and communities, especially during times of war when their male counterparts were away. There aren't that many references, but the ones that are indicate that when the chips were down, the samurai women would fight every bit as bravely as men. Notable figures such as Tomoe Gozen and Nakano Takeko are recognized for their bravery and skill in combat. Their legacy is a testament to the diverse roles women played in samurai society, challenging the traditional perceptions of gender roles in feudal society. Number 19, Armor. Celebrated for its elegant design and craftsmanship, Samurai armor effectively balanced protection with flexibility. The armor was made from small overlapping iron plates, which were joined by brightly colored cords to form a decorative and protective skin. The armor usually consisted of several key components. The kabuto, a type of helmet with a clan crest for identification. The do, or body armor crafted from iron or leather for ease of movement. Kusakari, skirt-like leg protection and kote, armored sleeves to safeguard the limbs. As warfare evolved, particularly with the introduction of firearms in the 16th century, samurai armor underwent significant changes. The Tose Gusoku style emerged, featuring larger iron plates to improve defense. Samurai armor eventually transitioned to a more ceremonial role, symbolizing status rather than serving as combat gear. <laughs> So from warriors to fashionable gentlemen. So this. Number 18, distinctive hairstyle. The chonmage was traditionally worn by samurai, featuring a shaved pate with the remaining hair tied into a small top knot. Originating as a practical measure to hold a helmet securely in place during fighting, the chonmage evolved into a symbol of status and identity. Maintaining this hairstyle required meticulous care reflecting the discipline and attention to detail that were hallmarks of the samurai way of life. Over time, the chonmage became integrated into the broader cultural practices of the samurai, including ceremonies and everyday attire, signifying not just martial readiness, but also adherence to social norms. In the modern era, while the chonmage is no longer commonly worn, it remains a powerful symbol of the storied past. Number 17, Kamikaze Origin. The term kamikaze, translating to divine wind, finds its origins in a miraculous event credited with saving Japan from Mongol invasions in the 13th century. Before a terrible danger appeared on the horizon. The Mongol hordes of Kublai Khan, the conqueror of China, in an invasion fleet of over 800 ships with 30,000 seasoned battle troops. In 1274 and again in 1281, the Mongol fleets, poised to conquer the country, were decimated by massive typhoons. Samurai defenders, having prepared to resist the invasions, interpreted these natural disasters as divine intervention. This belief reinforced the sense of duty and divine favor, embedding a spiritual dimension into their martial ethos. This convinced the Japanese that their land was protected by the gods, and they honored the storm with the name of Kamikaze. The invocation of the kamikaze during World War II as a tactic of sacrificial attacks by Japanese pilots later echoed this blend of national defense and spiritual sacrifice, drawing on the deep-rooted historical narrative that linked divine forces with the protection of the homeland. Number 16, personalized flags. During the tumultuous wars of feudal Japan, samurai employed sashimono, personal flags worn on their backs as a means of identification amid the chaos of combat. Japanese fighting men of the period carried flags strapped to their backs, which identified them as part of a particular clan. 
These banners, bearing the insignia or colors of their respective lords or clans, were not only decorative but served critical communicative and strategic purposes. They allowed for the organization of troops and the coordination of movements on the battlefield, where visual signals supplanted verbal commands. The design of the sashimono could range from simple geometric patterns to elaborate family crests, each one a reflection of allegiance and identity. This underscored the importance of loyalty and honor, and a readiness to lay down a life in service. Number 15. The Role of Horses in the context of warfare, horses were not just modes of transport, but symbols of prestige and vital assets. A samurai very often was a, a soldier on horseback, and so um, in preparing him for war, you had, of course, to prepare his horse. Contrary to the larger breeds used by European knights, Japanese war horses were smaller, yet highly valued for their agility and endurance. These traits made them well-suited to the terrain and the style of warfare practiced by samurai, which involved quick maneuvers and sudden charges. These horses were trained for combat, capable of responding to subtle cues from their riders, enabling them to navigate the chaos of battle effectively. The bond between a samurai and his horse was profound, rooted in the warrior's respect for his mount as a loyal companion in arms. The masks for the samurai horses were crafted out of leather, these were designed to complement the terrifying appearance of the warrior. Number 14, Voluntary Poverty. For some samurai, the concept of voluntary poverty was not an economic condition, but a profound expression of spiritual and moral discipline. It was argued that the samurai had a right to rule because of virtue, and that meant that one had self-discipline and was not after profit, was therefore was into service, was loyal. This was rooted in the already discussed ideals of Bushido, which emphasized virtues such as frugality, integrity, and the disdain for material wealth in favor of honor and duty. For these ascetics, living modestly was a deliberate choice to focus on the cultivation of character and martial prowess, distancing themselves from the distraction of temporal desires. He ordered his samurai to live lives of simple frugality, to have no fear of death, and to serve him, their absolute master. This lifestyle was also influenced by Zen Buddhism, which valued simplicity and mindfulness. By adopting voluntary poverty, these warriors sought to embody the highest ideals of Bushido. Number 13, Financial Distress. By the late Edo period, the samurai faced significant economic challenges, leading many into severe financial distress. This downturn was precipitated by a prolonged era of peace under the Tokugawa shogunate, which diminished the traditional roles as warriors and administrators. During this period, called the Edo period, the samurai became an urban class, moving from the country into the castle towns and cities. With no wars to fight and their bureaucratic positions becoming increasingly ceremonial, many found themselves with reduced stipends or entirely without income. Simultaneously, the rise of the merchant class and the flourishing of the cash economy further marginalized samurai, who were traditionally paid in rice and forbidden from engaging in trade. The resulting financial strain led some to sell their swords, take up farming, or pursue other non-martial paths to sustain themselves. And if the samurai were to survive, they needed to redefine their role in society. Number 12, from foot soldiers to nobility. The journey from mere foot soldiers to a dominant class of nobility underscores a significant evolution within Japanese society. Initially, in the Heian period from 794 to 1185, samurai were low-ranking warriors employed by the nobility for protection and to enforce their authority. The samurai defended his home and family, but his true glory came on the battlefield, defending his lord against enemies. Over time, as their military significance grew, so did their social standing and power. By the following Kamakura period, they had established themselves as distinct, with their own customs, culture, and governance systems. Their ascendancy was marked by the establishment of the shogunate, a military government led by a shogun, which effectively ruled the nation for much of its history until the Meiji Restoration in 1868. Yoritomo became shogun, military dictator, the first samurai ruler of Japan. Number 11, leaving swords at the door. During the aforementioned peaceful Edo period, a unique custom emerged among the samurai, leaving their swords at the door when entering a house. But in this unprecedented time of peace, the samurai no longer had a reason to use their swords. 
there were no more battles. This was not only a gesture of trust and respect towards the host, but also a reflection of the period's emphasis on social order. The Edo era, characterized by over two centuries of relative stability, included a further transition from warriors to bureaucrats and administrators. Domestic peace had a serious eroding effect on the warrior ideal Tokugawa tried to instill into his samurai. As the likelihood of combat diminished, the display of weapons in domestic settings became less common, and the act of not wearing swords indoors symbolized a commitment to civility. Number 10. The Art of Landscape Gardening The samurai's influence extended beyond the battlefield into the serene world of landscape gardening, contributing significantly to the development of the iconic Zen gardens. Japanese gardens reflect all the harmonious aspects of society with a sense of ordered, elegant formality. These gardens, designed with meticulous attention to detail and profound philosophical underpinnings, reflect a deep connection with nature and their pursuit of spiritual contemplation. The aesthetic principles guiding these gardens, simplicity, elegance, and the symbolic representation of natural landscapes, mirrored the cherished values of discipline, restraint, and aesthetic refinement. The gardens included a balance of water, stones, and bridges, and their formal nature still reflects Japanese society today. Through the art of gardening, swordsmen found a peaceful counterbalance to their martial duties. Number 9. Commitment to Education Education extended well beyond the mastery of martial arts to encompass a broad array of scholarly pursuits. This commitment to learning was integral to the samurai ethos, reflecting the ideal of bunbu ryodo, the pen and the sword in accord. He probably had a very stoic, Spartan kind of education, taught military skills, martial arts, and Chinese classics, Japanese classics. Warriors were expected to be as proficient in calligraphy, literature, and philosophy as they were in swordsmanship and archery. The study of Confucian classics, which emphasized ethics, governance, and personal virtue, was particularly revered, shaping the moral and intellectual foundation of the caste. Additionally, many samurai engaged in the study of Zen Buddhism, which influenced their approaches to combat and daily life with its principles of mindfulness and detachment. They were taught the Zen Buddhist belief that life is but a brief illusion, a flash of lightning, a bubble in a stream. Number 8. Blackening Teeth Among noble classes, ohaguro, or teeth blackening, was a significant cultural and aesthetic tradition. And she would adopt traditional older samurai ways, one of which was painting their teeth black, which was at one time a fashionable practice for married women. This process involved applying a dye made from iron filings and vinegar, sometimes mixed with other substances to the teeth, resulting in a distinctive black appearance. Far from being simply cosmetic, ohaguro symbolized maturity, beauty, and civilization. It was often done as part of coming-of-age ceremonies for both men and women. Additionally, in the context of the samurai, it served as a marker of social status, distinguishing the caste from commoners and signifying readiness for marriage. This gradually fell out of favor in the Meiji era, as Japan adopted more westernized notions of beauty and sophistication. Number 7. Tea Ceremony Masters Mastery over the art of the tea ceremony, or chanoyu, was highly esteemed, embodying the principles of harmony, respect, purity, and tranquility. During the peaceful rule of Yoshimitsu and his successors, the tea ceremony developed. This ceremonial practice, involving the preparation and presentation of matcha, powdered green tea, was more than a social or leisure activity. It was a spiritual and philosophical pursuit that mirrored dedication to discipline and self-refinement. Influential tea masters emphasized the aesthetic of wabi-sabi, finding beauty in simplicity and imperfection, which resonated deeply with the samurai ethos. As the tea ceremony celebrates the beauty and tranquility of everyday life, so Yoshimitsu's life was lived in peace. Through the tea ceremony, samurai cultivated patience, attentiveness, and a deeper connection to the transient nature of existence. Number 6. Meiji Restoration In 1868, Japan underwent a significant transformation with the Meiji Restoration, leading to the dismantling of the feudal system. Newly installed in power, the emperor was renamed Meiji, or Enlightened Rule. He became the symbol for a new Japan that would transform itself. This period marked the country's rapid modernization and westernization, introducing a conscripted national army and abolishing traditional privileges and stipends. 
many former samurai became influential in the new government structure, contributing their skills to the administration, military, and educational reforms. There were those who rose to the top and adapted themselves to a new role, and that role could be as administrators or as school teachers. The transition wasn't seamless. It sparked the Satsuma Rebellion in 1877, a samurai-led resistance against the new imperial rule. However, the rebellion's failure further solidified the end of the era, as the country moved towards industrialization and centralized governance. Number five, theatrical tradition. No theater, a classical Japanese dance drama performed since the 14th century, was deeply intertwined with the samurai class during the Tokugawa period. Esteemed for its refined and disciplined artistry, No was cultivated by samurai as a sophisticated accomplishment, reflecting the values and aesthetics of the warrior class. Unlike other forms of entertainment accessible to broader audiences, No was exclusive, with performances generally reserved for samurai and the nobility. Commoners were largely excluded from studying it or attending performances, except on special occasions that allowed a wider audience to view the performances outdoors. This exclusivity underscored no status as the premier theater art of the samurai, contrasting with the more accessible and populist appeal of kabuki. Number four, katana as symbol. Initially, the bow and arrow were the samurai's most esteemed weapons, emblematic of their riding prowess and strategic acumen. However, over time, the katana, a masterfully crafted sword, rose to prominence, becoming deeply entwined with identity. The samurai sword, the katana, was the soul of the samurai. This shift was not only practical but symbolic, as the katana came to represent the samurai's soul, embodying their virtues of honor, precision, and loyalty. This process of crafting a katana was imbued with spiritual significance, involving Shinto rituals to purify the weapon. The sword was of great spiritual significance to the samurai. They believed the swordsmiths who crafted these swords had supernatural power. Its possession was regulated, signifying status and a right to bear arms under the feudal system. The reverence for the katana persisted even as the role of samurai evolved, highlighting its enduring significance as more than a weapon. Number three, sexuality. In samurai culture, same-sex relationships under the practice known as wakashudo were both common and socially accepted. This tradition, which translates to the way of youth, involved an older samurai, ninja, forming a mentorship and often sexual relationship with a younger male, wakashu, typically an apprentice warrior. The relationship was physical but also educational, with the ninja responsible for teaching the wakashu martial skills, ethics, and cultural habits. Wakashudo also served as a means of strengthening social cohesion within the ranks. While sexual relationships between men were generally accepted in this context, they were subject to certain societal norms and expectations, reflecting the complex interplay between personal desires and social duties. Number two, masterless samurai. Ronin, or samurai who had lost their lords or found themselves without a master due to various circumstances, such as dismissal, the fall of their clan, or the death of their lord, occupied a unique and precarious position in society. In the cult of the Ronin, the masterless samurai, the one who uh, maintains this fierceness but with, without seeking, essentially, training, but also seeking a master to, 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 uh, to, to follow, to serve. Without the support and status provided by their feudal lord, Ronin faced social stigma and financial hardship, living on the margins of the caste. Despite these challenges, Ronin were not without their own opportunities and could become mercenaries, bodyguards, or even adventurers. The tale of the 47 Ronin is perhaps the most famous story, epitomizing the Ronin's enduring loyalty and commitment to the samurai code of honor, even in the absence of a lord. A story that has become one of the defining legends of Japanese culture, told and retold in countless books, plays, and movies. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications.
Number 1. Nanban Trade Meaning Southern Barbarian, Nanban was a term that eventually referred to Europeans, notably the Portuguese, who arrived in Japan in the 16th century. This era was characterized by significant interactions between the samurai-led society and the Western world. The first visits by the Portuguese in the mid-16th century were closely followed by British and Dutch traders half a century later, who brought with them exciting new goods, like this armor. The arrival of the Nanban introduced new military technologies, including firearms, which were incorporated into warfare tactics, forever altering the dynamics of the nation's history. The period also saw the samurai engaging with Christianity, leading to complex socio-political ramifications. European ships are welcomed by some local rulers, but also bring problems for the central government in the form of missionaries, who teach commoners and samurai alike of a religion contesting the authority of the Tokugawa shogunate. Although the Nanban trade offered access to novel goods and ideas, it eventually prompted the Tokugawa shogunate to enforce national isolation, or sakoku, seeking to preserve traditional culture and the samurai's predominant social status. Are there any other facts about samurai that could be on this list? Let us know in the comments. Much like his protective armor, a warrior's refined appearance concealed his impenetrable inner core. This ethic, preserved in writings of the samurai, would prepare the warrior to meet life and death with honor. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.